What's up, Empowered Christians? This is Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries. Today we are going to wrap up section one of chapter one, the purpose of it all. And we're going to cover section D, the invitation to eternal relationship. We've all been invited to an eternal relationship with God. So today we're going to dive right into that. If you haven't already, click like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Also, uh, pop over to uh, one of the places and get the book, The Empowered Christian Roadmap. Uh, you can get it on our website at empoweredchristian.org slash T-E-C-R-M. You can also use this link here to get it at Amazon. This link here to get the full color edition at Barnes & Noble. You can also use this link here to get it, the ebook version on other websites and whatever is your preference. Also, you can uh, pop over to our website and get free resources to use this as a Bible study curriculum, um, get access to all of these videos, print out the study guide evaluations, all that stuff. It's free on our website. So be sure to do that. So today we are going to cover uh, chapter one, section D, invitation to eternal relationship. So here's the main point. We're invited in Christ to enter into eternal family relationship with God. So that's, I mean, that's just awesome. <laughs> Right? That's the purpose of it all. You know, if we take these four, these four pieces that we've looked at over the last couple of videos, first, it's not our road. God created this. He's in control of it and what it's being used for. He's created two destinations, both eternal. And the reason he did so was for his own glory. We looked at in, in section B, celebrating God's glory, that God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in Him, when we realize who He is, and we rejoice and celebrate in that and share in that glory with Him. We looked at in the last section, section C, uh, God's triune nature, the, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, and how that reveals who God is, and how it reveals how He's relational in his own nature and we expand on that today that he has essentially created all of this and created you and created me and given us the gospel and given us this opportunity to enter into an eternal relationship with him and so that's really what it's all about that's what it's all about and if we once we understand that it really changes what it means to be a christian it changes what it means to what life is all about, what what we live for, our purpose, right? It's not just about what we can do or, or any of these things. It's, it's about knowing God and being known by God and having this, this wonderful uh, relationship. And it, it just begins with the gospel. It begins with, uh, you know, what Jesus did for us. And then it continues on into eternity. So we learn that in the last section, that the Holy Trinity, God wasn't lacking anything prior to creating beings. He already had it all. He already had perfect relationship within his own nature. He had perfect relationship. And, you know, it was perfect. It was better than the flawed, broken relationships that we often have, right? Which is sometimes good, sometimes bad, sometimes a mixture, right? And but there was no sin, there was no division within God. So why, if he already had perfect relationship, why did he create us to have relationship? If he had a perfect relationship, why want us with our, our limited ability to have a relationship? And the reason is for his glory, for more glory. We looked at already, it's a, God is about his glory. And it is, we, Scripture reveals to us that God can increase His glory and pleasure 
with us. <laughs> Believe it or not, that, that's the truth. It's God has, he would not have created us if our existence does not have the potential to increase his glory. So we are, our existence, and, and more specifically, a way of using our existence has the potential to increase his glory. And we find that how we do that best and most is through eternal relationship with him. Right? So it's, we, we learn in this chapter that God doesn't, he's, as much as he hates the death of anyone and the separation of anyone and that some will be lost and cast off eternally into hell, as much as he hates that and he does not wish that for anyone, and I provide a bunch of scriptures in there to argue for that, as much as he does not want that, and it's not his will that anyone should uh, die, uh, I'll, I'm actually, I think I'll give a couple in, in this video. Ezekiel 18.32 says, God speaking, says, I take no pleasure in the death of anyone. Flat out. God did not create people so that some of them would perish. He did not do that. He is not glorified in that. In the destruction of the wicked, he is less glorified than he is in the preservation of those who are being saved. If, if everyone were to be saved and have eternal relationship, it would be a good thing. It would be a thing that glorifies God more. And this is revealed to us. I gave a lot of, of scriptures um, a lot of the well-known parables from Luke 15, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son, um, all, you know, it says in Luke 5, 7, and in verse 10, and in verse 32, this is, these are, these are parts of the very end of each of those parables. In Luke 15, 7, it's Jesus speaking, he says, in the same way, I tell you that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous ones who do not need to repent. In verse 10, in the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of God's angels, right? In the, not, in, not God's angels, but in the presence of God's angels and who... Who's in the presence? God is. So God is the one being full of joy. There is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. And at the end of the prodigal son, verse 32, it says, But it was fitting to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So God is glorified in us repenting, moving from being dead to alive again, moving from being lost to being found. This is a glorious, wonderful thing. We know that God, this is his ultimate uh, destiny for each of us who are being saved. In Romans 8.29 and in 1 Corinthians 2.7, this is our ultimate destiny with Him. This is what God has predestined for us, for this eternal relationship. Um, and this relationship, ha it's, it takes lots of stages. We see it unfolding throughout the New Testament, right? He's he begins with, with Israel and he forms this relationship with them through Moses and then through the priesthood and the prophets. And then it continues with Jesus, who is 
according to Hebrews 1.3, the exact representation of his nature, right? God becomes relational. He, he, he comes down to humanity and takes upon, humanity, upon himself a human form, right? And not just to look like humans, but to actually become one. <laughs> and so his, he becomes more relational and relates to us in these ways. Then Jesus reveals to us the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, essentially. Um, we also learn other relational aspects, such as the Father sends the Son and the Spirit to us. The Son speaks to us, but not on His own, but on behalf of the Father. And the Spirit speaks to us, not on His own, but on behalf of Jesus. The Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father. We learn that the Son is our advocate before the Father, the Spirit is our advocate that Jesus sends to be with us forever, who is also Christ in us. So there's, there's interpersonal intimacy on every level here. We, we see the relationship happening. And this is also revealed to us in the entire new birth process, in the, the process of becoming a follower of Jesus, right? The, the Spirit, you know, Jesus said in John 3, in John chapter 3, in various passages, that no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again, right? So the Spirit has to regenerate us spiritually and take up residence inside of us in order for us to even begin to see the kingdom of God and to begin this relationship. For relationship is why we need to be in the Son and the Father is in the Son and the Son is in the Father. Through Christ, we become spiritually adopted, right? It, when, once we're in Christ, God the Father is now our Father. We know, so we're adopted so that He's our Father too. And all of us are now brothers and sisters, right? There's no, Jesus said there's no, in the afterlife, in the next life to come, there is no marriage and given in marriage, right? There, we are brothers and sisters for all of eternity. So we have this familial relationship. We're all brothers and sisters and we have one Father and we have one Lord and we all share a common spirit. It's very relational. So, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been engaging in this beautiful, eternal dance. And through Jesus, through the Gospel, we're being invited to share in that dance with them. We're invited to share into this eternal family relationship with the Holy Trinity. And how we relate to God, how we feel, feel every single day and how we live every single day will dramatically change based on how we realize this biblical truth right everything is different when we realize that god created us and is most glorified in us and we are most satisfied and most and, and receive the most glory out of our lives when we realize this and we participate in it. So another thing that, uh, and this actually isn't in, isn't in the book, but the Lord put this on my heart this morning, and I think, I think it fits perfectly, and I think uh, the Lord wants me to share it with you guys. In 2 Corinthians 3, Verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And verse 18 says, And we, who with unveiled faces, all reflect the glory of the Lord. Right? We, we, you and me, we reflect the glory of the Lord. Are being transformed into His image with intensifying glory. We're being transformed, which comes from the Lord, 
who is the Spirit. Isn't that powerful? This is, this is part of, uh, we are being not only invited into this eternal relationship, it's the whole entire process is transforming us to share in His glory through Christ. This is for His glory that this happens to us and for us and through us. You know, in, in 2 Corinthians 4, in the, the chapter that comes right after, uh, the, the very next verse, so this was a continuous thought when Paul was writing it, he says, Since God in His mercy has given us this ministry, we do not lose heart. Right? And it, it talks about casting off all, all of the the weight of this world because we are we're in this for such a long-term eternal beautiful amazing destiny and purpose so shake off the shackles of everything that is holding you down that is trying to keep you in sin that is keeping you stuck in the world and focusing on worldly things these things are all perishing we have an eternal destiny to know God and to be known by Him. And we are sharing. We're sharing in the glory of the Lord. He is reflecting His beauty through us. Through us. We are being transformed into His image with intensifying glory. Each one of us, a story is being written on that is more glorious and beautiful than the planets and the stars. More glorious than the mountains. More glorious than any of these things that are in and of themselves also glorious. And we're being transformed more. So, brethren, let that encourage you and give you hope and empower you to just be joyful where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom rest in that freedom rest in that joy rest in that peace let that empower you the holy spirit is living inside of you and he is empowering you for everything that the lord is calling you to be and to do there is nothing standing in front of you that will not be accomplished that should be Okay? So continue to press in, lean into the Lord, trust in Him, start to really build that relationship. Whatever is coming in your future, and I don't know what it looks like, but the Lord has got you. He is empowering you. And all things will work for the good of those who love Him and who are called according to this eternal purpose. So Believe and trust and have faith that that is your destiny and continue to walk in it and He will empower you and He will show His glory through you and through your life. And through that process, you will be transformed for His glory and for our eternal benefit in this eternal relationship with our Father, our Lord. So brethren, uh, be sure to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Get the book if you haven't already, so you're ready, you're reading the sections along with us. Get some friends or family to join in a Bible study with you. Go to the website, download and print out uh, you know, all the, the curriculum and use it as a little checklist, and be sure to go and print out the evaluations later later on you will be you'll test yourself and you'll have the study guide questions to discuss this and go even deeper i want you to to have the quick version in the book i want you to use these videos to to go deeper and to really think about these things and then come together as a community of believers and wrestle with them together discuss it together share life's burdens with one another pray for one another, lay hands on one another, minister to one another's needs, counsel, do all of these things 
empower one another and let the Holy Spirit minister to you through one another. This is, this is church. To do that is church. And through that, you build the relationships with one another and with God. And He works in and through you, through one another. And that's the purpose of it all. And then He will empower you to do everything else. And you'll go together stronger. Because we are stronger together in relationship. So brethren, go in peace. Be empowered by God's Spirit. And by this biblical, godly truth to make the most out of the week and the days coming ahead. And until next time, be empowered, and I'll see you soon. God bless.